Alright guys, so today I'm going to be doing cha-ching number 116. So the first thing that we have is a vintage Rainbow Bright plush. This was of Puppy Bright, Rainbow Bright's dog. Um, this sold for $19.99 and I picked this up at a yard sale. I probably paid about a dollar for it. I also sold a Joan Rivers necklace for $26.99 and this also probably came from a yard sale but it maybe also could have came on a tray of some jewelry I won at the auction. Uh, next thing was a Jinko jeans t-shirt. This did come from a yard sale. It sold for $44.99 and Jinko jeans, um, if you guys were teenagers back in like the early 2000s or had a teenager back in the early 2000s and was into like the the wide leg jeans phase, then you know all about Jinko jeans. Uh, but those are making a comeback like as far as reselling goes, like the Y2K or even just Jinko in general and those types of brands that were popular back then um, is definitely making a comeback. I rarely ever come across Jinko branded jeans and that's probably because they would just get so ruined <laughs> um, from dragging across the ground all the time when we were younger. Um, but yeah, so just a brand to look out for for sure and not just the jeans sell obviously so do the shirts and I know I've sold a hoodie once before as well. Uh, next we have a little red cardinal bird ordinament that sold for $5.99 and this probably just came on a tray of some stuff I won at an auction. I also sold a Yankee Candle Bony Bunch. Uh, this was a bride and groom. Uh, that sold for $19.99 and that did come from an auction. Um, at one point I had won quite a few pieces of the Bony Bunch figures. Some of them definitely sell better than others. I still have some left that haven't sold so they are slow movers, some of them. Some of them sold really quickly, but the ones that I still have left, um, I have had for a while. Um, let's see, I sold a Chaps Ralph Lauren patchwork quilt for $159.99. Um, this did come from an auction, and I'd say I probably paid about $20 or less for it. Next was a Grocery Gang blind box toy. This was brand new. It sold for $69.99 and that came from a yard sale and I think I paid 4 or $5 for it. Um, one yard sale I went to had quite a few of these and we bought all of them. It seemed like someone who did a lot of like the Walmart secret clearance shopping but had stuff that came out a little while ago so that's one thing that um like right now I feel like so many people do like the Walmart secret clearance and a lot of the times like you see the the toys and stuff at yard sales and you know where they got them and how much they paid for them if like you keep up with that kind of stuff but um so like in the now there's so many people doing it and there's such a saturation of those items that the the resale value on a lot of it is just like not there because there's just way too many people trying to sell it. But like here's an instance, but here's an instance where like, you know, someone had this stuff for a while and then I found it at a yard sale. So it, it gained the the resale value from sitting for a few years, you know what I mean? So like, I feel like those types of yard sales with people that have those types of toys come a few years from now when we see them at yard sales, they might be worth more than what they are currently. So just something to think about. Um, I sold a Lush Snow Fairy Solid Perfume for $29.99. This was actually one of my friends. I purchased it from her at a yard sale that we had together. And I think she had like a quarter or 50 cents on it. Um, I sold a Monster High Twyla Doll for $29.99. And 
and that came out of a tote of Monster High dolls that I won at no, I always say, because I, I won some Monster High dolls at an auction, but I purchased a tote full at a yard sale. Um, and I'm pretty sure this one came from the tote. Um, I sold a Starbucks Maryland mug to a subscriber named Dawn. Um, this sold for $15.99, and that did come from a yard sale. I also sold a Bratz Genie Magic Chloe doll for $29.99. That came from a flea market, and I think I paid $4 for that. This was an Iron Hill Brewery mug that sold for $14.99, and that came from a fill -a bag rummage sale, I believe. Next item was just a tiny little Barbie flower vase. So this, I think, was for a Barbie dollhouse of some sort that sold for... $14.99 and that just came out of a baggie of random little toys that I had purchased at a yard sale and that's one of the things I love about picking up just little random baggies of toys at yard sales because sometimes just like one little piece in that bag that you maybe pay like five dollars or less for the bag just that one little piece might be worth you know a decent amount the only downside to purchasing bags like that is just like trying to identify each piece and figuring out if it's even like worth listing singly and that type of thing. So it's something that I kind of enjoy and then I kind of loathe at the same time. But typically when I come across like some decent looking baggies of little toys at yard sales, I'll just pick them up. We sold a Monet Lighthouse Trinket Box for $38.99. This came from an auction. Um, there was a whole bunch of Monet Trinket Boxes at the auction one day. And funny story, just last week there was more Monet Trinket Boxes at the auction. So Eric went and he got a couple more. And we actually just sold two of them um, yesterday that we had just listed. So some of them are worth way more than others it just depends on the the subject matter um i sold a fossil shopper tote purse for 39 dollars and 99 cents and that probably came from a yard sale i sold this pair of amber glass they were like mushroom shaped taper candle holders um those sold for 29 dollars and 99 cents and i picked those up at a yard sale I think I paid $2 for them. Next was a white ceramic. Um, these were like plant markers. There were, it was a set of four. So you could write on them with like marker. And then if you were planting something, you could write, you know, what you were planting and stick it in like the pot or something. Like if you were planting an herb or like cilantro, that type of thing. Um, those sold for $13.99 and I had these for a while and I cannot remember where I picked them up. I sold three Beekman 1802 candles. The first one was a Lily of the Valley scented candle that sold for $19.99. Um, this was the same person that purchased all three of these. Uh, the next one was a Violet and Wisteria fragrance candle that sold for $19.99 and they also purchased the Lang Lang for $19.99. Um, I had purchased all of these at an auction and I do think I have a couple candles left. I sold this Eric picked up at a yard sale. It was from the 1900s. They were ro like roller tools but they had this um, imprint of like wood grain. So when you would like roll it out, um, like for like wallpaper and stuff, it would give that like wood grain kind of look to it. Um, so he found that at a yard sale. It sold for $44.99. And I can't remember exactly what he paid for it, but I know it wasn't much. Um, next item was for some mouse trap replacement placement pieces for the mousetrap game. Those sold for $11.99. Um, those came from an auction. 
Eric had won a box of just some random games and things like that and people definitely will buy replacement pieces for things and that can be anything from games to appliances to like literally anything um vacuum cleaners you name it if something breaks or someone loses something to something else um you know they will look on ebay for that replacement instead of having to like repurchase something all over again type of thing so there's definitely money to be made in replacement pieces and parts to stuff uh, we sold a Bluetooth headset for $89.99 and that did come from an auction. Next item was for a little vintage doll from 1967. She was called a Tiny Teens Doll. She sold for $9.99 and I picked her up at a yard sale. I think I paid a dollar or less for her. I also sold a vintage children's Swiss Air little purse for $19.99 and that came from an auction I had won just a couple of like um, like airline type of memorabilia pieces and that came from there um, I sold a philosophy baby grace lotion for $89.99 that did come from an auction as well. Next item went to a subscriber named Sandra. She purchased these uh, Miller Studio Chalkware Turtles for $12.99 and I'm trying to think of where those came from. I feel like they might have come from a yard sale as well. Um, another subscriber named Misty purchased a Vintage Japan Honeycomb Witches for $39.99. Those came from an auction. Um, they were in a box of some Halloween stuff that we won. I also sold a Vintage Wet n Wild Barbie bathing suit for $19.99. So again, this is just one little piece of Barbie clothing that sold for $20. And... Again, this was probably in a bag of some, you know, vintage Barbie stuff that I purchased at a yard sale. And I know, like, especially, like, when I go to to auctions and there's, like, Barbie stuff there, a lot of um, resellers and a lot of, like, women who are in into, you know, even collecting Barbie and stuff like that or reselling Barbie like I always hear a lot of them say that like 90s Barbie stuff just isn't that spectacular as far as like reselling goes and things like that but like I beg to differ I feel like there is good money in 90s Barbie stuff so I still pick it up when I see it and some of the pieces kind of like this bathing suit there is money to be made there. I sold a set of two Ransberg mushroom canisters for $25.99 and these probably came from a yard sale. The next five items went to a subscriber named Karen. She had purchased a Tatcha Red Camellia Lip Mask for $69.99. This came from an auction. This particular item um, the shade was discontinued, so that's what make, makes it harder to find and really brings up the price on that particular beauty piece. Um, she also purchased a Givenchy Amariage perfume for $29.99. That probably came from an auction. Um, next was a Balenciaga uh, mini perfume for $15.99. A Burberry mini perfume for $12.99 and a Philosophy Amazing Grace body balm for $19.99. So she's going to be smelling really nice. Um, I also sold an Orvis button-up top for $6.99. This was one of those things I've had forever. Um, next item went to a subscriber named Lisa. She purchased a set of Christian Dior um, little travel um, pots and bottles. They were empty and you can just fill them with whatever product you wanted to. Those sold for $22.99. 
Um, I sold a necklace and earring set by Scassi for $129.99. This did come from an auction. I also sold a folk art piece, a minnow pheasant, um, wood, wooden pheasant pe uh, folk art piece. That sold for $54.99 and that also came from an auction. Oh, and then I also sold a yellow tulip, which was also a minnow piece for $39.99, also from that same folk art auction. Uh, next item was a Murano Tutti Frutti candy bowl that sold for $44.99, and I'm pretty sure that came from an auction. Uh, the next two items went to Sandra again. She purchased a pink swung vase for $12.99, as well as a Siamese carved wooden cat for $19.99, and both of those items, I think, came from a yard sale. I also sold a Flintstones alarm clock for $14.99. That came from an auction. A Fenton Amber Hobnail Fairy Lamp for $29.99. That either came from an auction or a hard sale. And then last thing that I sold was another Monster High doll. This one was of Claudine Wolf, and that sold for $19.99. So that is everything for um, this cha-ching. So as far as eBay goes, I feel like my light has turned back on a little bit. I always like <laughs> sometimes joke like, and I see other people joking about it on like eBay groups where like eBay turns your light on and you have a lot of sales and then they turn your light off and the sales go bye bye. <laughs> so I definitely feel like sales have been picking up here lately. I feel like I've been selling some stuff that I've had sitting for a little while, which is always nice. And then I've been having some sales that have been like popping off um, soon after I list them, which is fantastic. So currently, currently I have 2,921 eBay listings. And it's not necessarily how many eBay listings you have, but the more you have, the more likely you're going to be selling pretty consistently because you have a lot of stuff to offer. So you'll just automatically, you should see more sales because you have way more listings. So like, I don't really have goals as far as to like have so much listed, but I definitely feel the more I get listed and the more I list, the more likelihood and higher chance I'm seeing sales. So I do feel like that is one thing that kind of like helps a bit as far as reselling goes is having a decent amount of stuff listed. Um, like I said, it doesn't necessarily matter if you are selling stuff that people are like, you know, it's a hot commodity type of thing, then you know your sales are going to be great because people are constantly looking for, you know, whatever items you're selling. Um, but that's just me personally, like something that like I feel kind of generates more sales is just having more listed. Um, so eBay is doing pretty good right now. Uh, the two things, the two, yeah, there's two things that have been bugging me a little bit um, as far as eBay goes. The one is, and you've heard me talk about it in my other cha-chings, my cha-ching noise still isn't right. I just saw that I went into my Play Store on my phone and I saw that there was an update. So I updated the app in hopes that maybe it'll be fixed. <laughs> so I haven't sold anything since I updated again, but um, we'll see if that did anything. And another thing that I've been noticing, no, actually two things. So it's three things that I'm thinking about. Um, when I, like I list using my phone, it's just quicker and easier for me. And when I'm typing up a description in my listing, like when I go back out to like put in my, you know, buy it now price or whatever, sometimes whatever I just wrote up for my description just disappears on me. So that's really obnoxious, especially if you, you know, took the time to write up a fairly decent 
um, description. So like, I've, I've gotten burned on that so many times here recently where it's not saving for some reason that like I've been copying um, my description each time I write it up just in case it would lose it when I, you know, go in to put in my price or whatnot. So that's just been kind of a headache. Um, so I don't know if anyone else has been seeing that issue. I know Eric had that issue, so I know it's not just me. Um, and then the other thing is like we just shipped out all of our packages from yesterday, but in the app, it's still saying that there's nine plus packages that need to be shipped. And right now I think there's only like seven that need to be shipped. So it's still saying that there's more to be more to be shipped than there actually is. So like that's not updating properly, um, which isn't like a huge deal. I'm sure it'll work itself out, but it's still a little obnoxious to see it because you know, like you don't actually have the, the nine plus there to ship. Um, so, you know, <laughs> it's not like the biggest deal, but it's just one of those things you don't want to see when you know you already did it type of thing. But um, that's pretty much all that I had to really talk about um, how eBay is going and just some, a couple like random problems that I've been having with the app here recently. Um, and then the only other thing that I really have to talk about that's not necessarily eBay related, but you guys know I like to chat after these videos. Um, so I know you've been hearing me say multiple times here recently in um, some of my videos that we are hoping to get an antique booth sometime soon. Well, I finally <laughs> emailed um, the owners of a local antique mall and um, I sent them pictures of some of our inventory, what we have to offer, a little bit about us in general and stuff like that. And we are on the waiting list for a booth and I just don't know how long it's going to take. They said it could take up to a year, um, but obviously it could be sooner than that. It just, you know, obviously depends on if someone, um, you know, is ready to close their booth and stuff like that. So we're at least on the waiting list and I think they're happy with the type of inventory that we have. Um, the antique mall is rather large and I'll talk all about it like once we're actually you know, in and um, when we uh, get set up and everything like that, I'll definitely start making videos of that, like our setup and like when we, you know, refresh it and things of that nature. Um, but it's an antique mall that's been around for a while and me and my parents used to go to it a lot as well. So it like holds that kind of like memory for me as well so and I like the place Eric and I go pretty often just to look around and we buy stuff for ourselves and sometimes I find some stuff to to resell so and we really like it there so we're really excited about um all of that so hopefully it comes about soon um so I just have to be patient <laughs> I just have to be patient but like I said we're just kind of like still gathering everything as far as like what we're using we're going to use to display stuff and things of that nature because at the moment like we're not even going to know like precisely how big the booth area is going to be and all of that good stuff so but I'm just really excited because um a lot of the people that we know at auctions have booths there and they really like the place and have nothing but good things to say about it so the fact that they're happy and they have no problem making um, decent money there, like it really makes me feel good because <laughs> that's one thing that worries me. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to lose money <laughs> having a booth, but I think we do have a lot of good stuff that we can consistently put in um, to a booth. So. Hopefully that all works out and you guys will obviously be the first to know how how it's going. So, and then once like I've got everything together, I, you know, I'll let you know where it is and my booth number and everything like that. So that way if you're ever in the area, you can come check it out. 
So I'm just really, really excited. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought down in the comments and I will see you next time.